Yo, what's the deal, man? It's yours truly, Stewie, a.k.a. J. Nix, the Flies Gun Radio. As I told y'all before, man, I'm part of a wonderful, amazing organization by the name of Fathers, Inc., Fathers Incorporated, man. Fatherhood is a brotherhood. And it's basically, matter of fact, can you let you explain it, man? Let them know what Father Inc. is. First of all, thank you, sir, for having me on again. I love talking to you. Our conversations are always so spirited. Um, this work is the basic work that we have to do with fathers. Um, what we're trying to get them to understand is that your best fatherhood happens when you're a part of a great brotherhood. Okay. And we understand that word, brother. We've been using that word for decades on decades on decades, right? So in the 70s, it was, oh, what's up, bro? What's up, brother? If you're a Christian, it's my brother and my sister. If right. you are Muslim, it's my brother and my sister. So we understand brotherhood. And so what we want people to know, if particularly young fathers, to understand that you got to be connected, man. You can't be out there by yourself on the island whatever you're suffering with today and whatever you're dealing with today somebody else is dealing with but if you stay isolated you're never going to be connected so let me ask you this question why why is the focus on fathers and the black father so important at time like this we're critical fathers are critical anyway right we're one half of the dna at the basic level right but our children demand and they deserve and they need us that's the equation that's the part of the equation that people forget it's kind of like oh they don't lead their dad oh yes they do right yeah. because we're essential to their lives we we add a, a different level of self-esteem we add other elements that moms quite frankly just don't add like i say this to um both moms and dads all the time you can be the best mom you can be but you can't be a dad you can be the best dad you can be but you can't be a mom our children need both and what happens is we can't get over the hurt and issues that we had in the relationship to get to the real need that our children need as it relates to their parents. Those are two different relationships. I tell our fathers all the time, you don't have to be in a relationship to have a relationship. Those are two different things. So what would you advise some of the fathers to do? Because I know sometimes it gets frustrating. Like I, I'm coming into a thing where I'm talking to so many dads. So it was a point where it's the frustrating part of dealing with that woman, fighting with that woman, trying to see your cop, <laughs> trying to see your kid, trying to do this, trying to do that. When you get to, you get to a point where you're frustrated, you're like, F it. Right. F it. right. I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired right. of fighting. I'm tired of trying to do something right. that I'm supposed to do as a father and you won't let me do it. What would you tell some of those fathers ready to give up and quit? You know, the message that I give to them is losing the battle worth losing the war, right? Mm -hmm. What's the goal? The goal is to get to your child. Giving up is not going to get you there. And so finding some pacing, right? Not allowing yourself to go over the top. Finding your release valves. That's what your boy should be. That's what your, your brotherhood and your accountability circle should be. That mechanism that allows you to release that valve. All of us need that cat we can call, right? We have our brothers in our lives that make us laugh. We have our brothers in our lives that allow us to cry. We have our brothers in our lives that allow us to go off the top. We have all those kinds of people in our circle and they serve as release valves for us. Right. And what I say to young brothers is when you get frustrated like that, look for your release valve and let them get you to a consciousness where you can be logical about the next action you're going to take because your life is a sum total of your actions and the consequences that follow them. And you wanna make sure that you make the best decisions that get you to your ultimate goal, regardless of how long it takes you to get there. Facts, facts, okay. So let me ask you a question, why, why is there so few organizations to even support black fathers? Like, I, I, feel, like, I, I feel like it's almost like they're counting against us. The worst <laughs> thing, it seems like this whole country, like the worst thing what we need to do is make sure we keep these brothers out the household. We right. cannot have kings raising right. young kings because now they're gonna have direction and power. Why is there so few organizations that, that's not helping black, black men even figure this out? Well, I'm gonna start with what you just said in a conversation that we're gonna have to have at another time, right? It goes back to when we were brought to this rock, right? Yeah. Um, in order to destroy the fault, in order to destroy the family, you got to destroy the head. We represent the head, and it has always been a war against the head, no matter no matter how long we've been here, you know. But up till today, it's difficult to get. I said this in a meeting this morning. I was talking to someone. I said it's amazing how um, cute little boys turn into trifling men right. without doing anything. And it's at some point in our lives that boys turn into this thing that people don't like. And in a very unfortunate way, the only thing that surges 
the social justice movement and the things that happen in this country, including uh, including freedom with Frederick Douglass and, and civil rights with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and others here in Atlanta. And then a couple of years ago with President Obama and recently with George Floyd and Armand Perry is when a black man dies on the street. Hmm. Every time a black man dies on the street, all of a sudden we have compassion for the black man. But we don't have compassion for him when he hasn't seen his child for three months. Mm -hmm. And he's not a bad dude. Mm -hmm. And he's trying. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that is keeping him from seeing his child is an individual who's bitter because of the nature of their relationship that is no longer available. Right. right? The selfishness in this conversation. So for the organization, it's difficult to create organizations off the top that can provide that comprehensive service that these guys need to be able to strengthen them enough to stay in the game. Because that's really what it's about. Strengthening them enough to stay in the game, to do all the things that society needs them to do, but ultimately get to what they want, which is their children. So having an agency that can help brothers with getting jobs, having an agency that can help them deal with their anger issues, having an agency that can help them with their housing, having an agency that can help them get jobs and to do all these other things that society demands of them and the things that they need to take care of their children but no one has the patience to work with them because the value system in america as it relates to black men isn't worthy mm. Mm. so so look th this is one of my biggest things and i, I want to see your outlook on this our black women i feel like it's a generational curse that it starts with one father not being the household and it comes it's, it's, a, it's a it's a downhill battle now because, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with certain women I talk to, they always tell me, well, I'm not worried about my baby daddy being in my son life or my daughter life because I ain't had no dad and I turned out fine. Right. But, right. but <laughs> you're not fine. Right, right, <laughs> right, okay. right, right. You think you, you're tricking yourself and saying <laughs> that you're okay, but you're not okay. You have that <laughs> issues. How important is for women to allow that father to be in their lives, especially because we are, like you said, we had a critical time where black men are dying on the street. We getting killed by each other. We getting killed by police officers. Mm -hmm, we just get mm -hmm. murdered and slaughtered. Like, how important is for the woman to allow? Like, when will it be okay for you to be like, yo, just let this man be in the household. Let this man raise this boy. Let him let him teach him how to be a king. Let him teach him how to be a man. How important is for women to let go? Well, here's the issue, right, Jabe? So we did a, a survey some years ago in my work with the National Responsible Father Clearinghouse nationally asking women, did would they want the lot would they want the fathers in the lives of their children? 97% of them said yes. Hmm. Where we got to the issue was, it wasn't that they didn't want them in their lives. They wanted them in their lives the way that they wanted them in their lives. Talk to them. Talk to them. That's the issue. The issue is you can't be in your in my in the child's life if you're not if you don't show up the way I want you to show up. If you don't talk the way I want you to talk. If you make sure that you don't see who I don't want you to see. If you make the kind of money that I want you to make. You have the job and drive the car that I want you to job. Again, it's the selfishness nature of people who have come from relationships that are grounded in selfishness, right? And so families who do not have or, or individuals who've had challenges with one or the other parent, either moms or dads. And when you think about father anger, father absent anger, it's equal to mother absent anger. We just don't talk about mother absent anger. When you talk to someone who had a dysfunctional relationship with their mom, listen to any Eminem song. Right. And listen to how he talks about his mom. He talks equally with the same level of venom that many rappers and others talk about fathers in their songs. And so for women, it's really understanding that um, if you want the best for your child, you have to be able to disconnect the emotion that's connected to the previous relationship from the emotion that it takes to raise your child as fully and healthy as that individual can possibly be. When they say, I don't want you to see your child, they're speaking from the from the point that they believe that you seeing a child is their right. Like it's my right to keep him out of the child's life. When that's untrue, the real right lies with the child, which is I have a right to be with both my mother and father and no one should have the right to take them away from me. Less danger. 
So we never say that we want people in the lives of children if they're going to be unsafe and harmful. And else. But outside of that, it's the child's right to have equal access to both ch to both children. And unfortunately, our system has played a cruel role over the years in cultivating a system that do that that does not allow that to happen. Hmm. So let me ask you a question. So how much damage do you think is done to a child um, with a mom keeping their father away? Man, it's you know I don't know if I would exactly attach it to mom uh, keeping well, children dad, away, anyway, but keeping but more. but being far. I know where you're going. I know and and it, and it's part of it. So we won't say we won't dismiss what you just said. It is a part of it. But the real issue is the father absent itself, right? We see the behavior of fatherless children in our community all the time, right? The research says that children are five times more likely to live in poverty when their fathers are not in their lives. They're three times more likely to be runaways when their fathers are not in their lives. 80% of our criminal justice system is filled with fathers, right? A large percentage of children that are attached to incarcerated parents become incarcerated or entangled in the community, in the criminal justice system themselves. So you can look up and down the spectrum of, of research and evidence that shows you that when fathers are not involved in the lives of their children, their children struggle. Does it mean that moms can't raise their children? It just means that there's going to be some nuances that you have to be mindful of, even in the education space, right? When fathers are engaged in the educational lives of their children, they're more apt to spell to um, make A's. They're more apt not to drop out of high school. They're more apt not to be absent. They're more apt not to engage in deviant behaviors. They're more apt not to, not to, not to. That's across the board. So evidence speak very loudly about the importance and the value of fathers in the lives of their children. We just can't get past this emotional thing. Right. And this emotional thing is what's really hurting our children and the deep, deep. And I'm talking now I'm digging into my own uh, our roots. Right. Uh, these 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 roots that um, have allowed our parents to hold on to these deep, deep family secrets and won't allow us to be able to know that part of what we're going through through is what you described, this generational curse where we keep perpetuating the same drama over and over and over again because we think what happened to our parents is supposed to happen to us, is supposed to happen to our children. So let me ask you something. What was your mindset when you created the next level, um, next level skills curriculum and the next level fatherhood curriculum that's used in Father Inc. Incorporated? That fathers need the basics, that we think that just because they're grown, that they've been taught. We think just because they are fathers that they know how to be fathers. Um, the life skill curriculum was the one that we created first before, before the fatherhood one because it was our um, notion that um, dads, and we have a lot of women that come through those classes, under, needed to understand basics before we started talking about parenting, right? And so our curriculums are the modules in that curriculum include thing like and things like responsibility. I remember somebody saying, yo, why would you put a whole module in a curriculum about responsibility? Why would you have to teach a grown a person about responsible or responsibility? And my answer, my answer back to them was you make the assumption that all people have been taught to be responsible. They have not been taught to be responsible, which is why you just can't say to a young man to man up. Right. That means nothing to him if he doesn't understand what it means to be a man. And so what we did is we backed into the basics and said, listen, we got to start from scratch. We got to help these brothers understand what it means to be prepared, what it means to be consistent, what it means to be aware, self-actualization, who they are, what it means to be trustworthy, having integrity, what it means to understand their social circle and what how that impacts who they are. They got to understand all those things before I can start talking talking to them and introducing them this whole concept around responsible fatherhood. Wow, and, that, and that's facts. So what are some things that fathers should be doing to ensure healthy outcomes for their children and their families? Like, what, what, can we, what, what can we do? Presence. I mean, that's always the number one thing. And you can be present a number of different ways. I know that the primary way that fathers want to be present is there, touch to touch, right? But where you can't be there touch to touch. Uh, we live in a tech technological age where you can still text, you can still email, you can still FaceTime, you can still 
the post office, the post office is still open. You can still mail cards. You can still mail presents. You can still, you could do all of these things that connect you. Here's what I always tell dads. Um, a long time ago, I was listening to Spike Lee being interviewed by uh, Donahue and Donahue asked him the question, how do you feel about everybody um, calling your films controversial. And Spike Lee's answer to him was, talk to me in 10 to 15 years when you see the body of my work. Don't analyze me based on this one thing that you want to tear apart, but talk to me when you've seen the body of my work. That's what fathers got to do. Fathers got to think about the body of their work so that when they are approached by their child, which they will be at some point in their lives, they got to be able to present to that child the body of their work. And if they never got the card, they never got the email, they never got the text, he should be um, recording all those things that say, that's not true. Let me show you the evidence of the times that I've tried to connect with you and the times that I emailed, I sent you a present, the time that I did this, it wasn't me. Our children are smart enough to be able to understand what was the reason that their father wasn't in their lives. And that's what I tell moms all the time. Listen, it happened to my mom when my mom told me the real story about my dad. I was 50 years old when she told me the real story about my dad, which contradicted everything that I thought about my dad to that point. And as a result of that, it came back on her her entire life because I always blamed her for my father not being in my life. Mm. Mm. At 50. At 50, she wow. told me the real deal about my father. Wow, wow. So, um, so what are some services, fathers, that, that, um, that you work with need the most? I think right now, you know, most of the fathers that come into our space are looking for these issues around um, helping them with child support, custody and visitation, you know, and unfortunately here in Georgia, we're dealing with this legitimation thing, right? And most guys don't even know what legitimation is. They don't, they don't. Wait, wait, so let's go ahead and explain that, legitimation. Listen, legitimation is a second, uh, a second layer um, um, process that says to the court system that you are actually eligible to have rights to your child. Um, there's a there's a precursor to that and that is paternal. That's getting the DNA and making sure that you are the dad. But, the, but Georgia State, if you're not married, does not recognize you as the parent until you go through this legitimation process. Mm. So and it's not an easy process and you have to go through the courts to do that. But a lot of cats don't even know about the legitimation process. I, I was talking to a brother the other day whose daughter, something happened to the mom um, and they want to take the daughter and they want to put the daughter in the foster care system. And he couldn't understand why they couldn't give him the child. And the answer was, you're not legitimized. And he had no idea that there was a process to become um, recognized as a, as a parent of his own child all of these years that he never knew that. So it's important for brothers to understand you got to do two things in the state of Georgia and not many other states are like this. You have to establish paternity and you have to establish rights. And unfortunately, as it relates to child support, the court doesn't need you to be legitimized to hit you with a child support case crazy that doesn't make any sense at all right so it happens me, one way but it don't happen the other way so you telling me that in the state of georgia all these brothers are think that because they went to the the, the birth of their child right signed the birth certificate thinking they're the father but you really still don't have no rights to this child you still don't have no rights you have no parental rights you can't you know you can't you're not you're not supposed to be able to sign them up for school you can't get their doctors you can't do any of those things and in the unfortunate situation where mom might be lost um the system can come in and scoop up your child wow so what we what, what can what can fathers ain't do or what can organizations do or fathers that really can't afford to go there, is there a way to do it without a lawyer? Absolutely, and that's one of the things that we're trying to tackle right now. We're really looking at this whole legitimation process and trying to normalize it so that um, fathers could get information to really fully understand it and then walk there. It's a 
paperwork process. Um, but when it gets tricky, you need somebody to come in and kind of help you with some other nuances. But for most dads, it's just a paperwork process. And so we have caseworkers now that if you need help with your legitimation, we have some lawyer partners that also are helping us with legitimation. Please just call us, um, you know, at our agency, email us at um, fathers in, info at fathersincorporated.com. Um, call us at 770-804-9800 and we'll connect you with a caseworker, an outreach worker, someone who's going to get you to the person you need to walk you through the legitimation process. Again, you don't have to do this alone and you're not by yourself. There's a lot of cats out there do, that have no idea about this legitimation process. And it is one of my goals here in the city of Atlanta to educate as many fathers as possible um, that they need to get legitimized um, if they want to ultimately have custody and those kinds of things over their child. Wow. Well, definitely, I appreciate you. You know what I mean? I appreciate you always sitting down talking to me. You give us so much knowledge out, and we definitely, I'm definitely appreciative of what you're doing for our community and our Black fathers out there, because even with me, I'm going through it right now that I'm in the process of getting my son's legitimized and didn't know that really, the reality is, she don't got to let me see these boys at all. She right. can, my, my child's mother can do whatever she want to do because these kids are legally not mine. They're right. mine, but they're legally not mine. Right. So definitely um, get the information one more time because I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to tackle right now is getting legitimized. Absolutely. And so there's a couple of things what we've been telling people is coming to the brotherhood. Once you come into the brotherhood, we can connect you with all things. And so just simply go to our um, service providing website at www fatherhoodisbrotherhood.com. You can also text fatherhood is brotherhood to 66866, or you can call our office at 770-804-9800. I definitely appreciate you again. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'm so thrilled that you guys picked me to be part of Father's Inc., man. I got a brother. That's right, man. You, you, you gonna be our success story, brother. You don't know that yet. You and I are gonna get back on here and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be interviewing you and you're gonna tell me about the process, the journey, and you're gonna tell me how it feels to be on the other end. I appreciate it, King, because a lot of people don't know I'm going through a certain situation with my situation, my kids. So you're not alone. I'm out here with you, too. And we're going to fight. We just got to be better black men, better fathers and better warriors out here. I appreciate you, Kenny, so much, brother. I appreciate you more, bro. Listen, good luck. And we know we're going to get on the other side of this um, better for not only yourself, but for your child. I appreciate you, King. Take care. You too.